everyone welcome to my channel in this video you're going to study a very interesting short story the sniper by Liam O'Flaherty so just look at the spelling of Liam O'Flaherty it's L-I-A-M O is written separately you put an apostrophe and then Flaherty so this is a picture of Liam O'Flaherty just have a look at it okay so if possible do remember his picture if not possible, it's okay. So this is something we have about Liam of Laherty and his life. So Liam of Laherty, August 1896 to September 1984, was an Irish short story writer and a novelist. His work is satirical and involves a deep analysis of his country's situation at the time when he was writing. Of Laherty also served as a soldier in the World War I. Some of Flaherty's best-known works include The Neighbor's Wife, The Black Soul, and The Peddler's Revenge, and other stories. So, Liam O. Flaherty, the writer of a chapter, what's the name of the chapter? The Sniper. Okay, so this chapter, The Sniper, is written by Liam O. Flaherty, and I hope you have just familiarized the spelling also, isn't it? So, he was born in the year 1896 and died in September 1984. He was an Irish short story writer and novelist. So, uh, where could be his birthplace? It's Ireland, isn't it? Yeah, he was from Ireland and he was an Irish writer. So, his works are satirical and also thought-provoking. That is, whenever we get to read or that whenever get, we get a situation to read his books, it will be something that is thought-provoking and it will be related to Ireland. That is, whenever he wrote the situations that he took was the situations that was at that time when he was writing whatever the situation was prevailing at uh, in Ireland he wrote about it okay so Flaherty also served as a soldier in the first world war so what could be the other thing that he might have written so whenever he wrote something it will be something relating to the life of some soldiers isn't it life of soldiers or the experience that he might have had as a soldier and all those will be given so, in some stories, we might get to read something like that. So, some of Flaherty's best known works, I have just taken three, that is from your text itself. So, I think the names are very uh, catchy and you'll remember it. The Neighbor's Wife. Okay, so, Neighbor and His Wife. So, it's Neighbor's Wife. The Black Soul. Black Soul, it's really a catching, isn't it? So, whenever you think of soul, that is when you think of ghost, what it comes to your mind is white color, isn't it? So, now we have the Black Soul and the Peddler's Revenge, the revenge of a peddler. So, what are the three uh, best known works? The Neighbor's Wife, The Black Soul, The Peddler's Revenge. I hope you will not forget it. Okay, so I'll just read it once again so that you can be thorough with it. Liam of Laherty, August 1896, September 1984. That is, he was born in August 1896 and died in September 1984. He was an Irish short story writer and a novelist. His work is satirical and involves a deep analysis of his country's situation at the time when he was writing. O'Flaherty also served as a soldier in the World War I. Some of Flaherty's best known works include The Neighbor's Wife, The Black Soul, The Peddler's Revenge and other stories also there. Okay, so I hope you have just got an idea about Flaherty, isn't it? So without wasting much time, let me move into the content. The long June twilight faded into night. Dublin lay enveloped in darkness. But for the dim light of the moon that shone through fleecy clouds, casting a pale light as of approaching dawn over the streets and the dark waters of Liffey. Around the beleaguered four courts the heavy guns roared. Here and there through the city, machine guns and rifles broke the silence of the night, spasmodically like dogs barking on lone farms. Republicans and free starters were waging civil war. Okay, so I have just given a quick read. Were you able to catch a few ideas? If yes, very good. If no, don't worry. I'll just explain the rest to you. Okay, so this was happening. That is when this scene is happening or when this story is written. It is a day in June. You of course know the days are long during June, isn't it? The nights are short. So days will be longer and nights will be shorter during the summer seasons. Yeah. So, isn't this the same sentence that you have studied in your smaller classes? Days are long and the nights are short in summer. Yeah, I hope you have learned such sentences also. Okay, so the long June twilight faded into night. The days are long enough. And now 
we get to know it is twilight faded into night. What is twilight? I'll just show you a picture and then explain you. Okay. So, have you seen the picture? Okay. So, this is a picture with which I'm going to explain you what is twilight. So, when the sun goes below the horizon, that is, it is the sun is setting, isn't it? So, when the sun goes below the horizon, you have a dim light that is not very bright light of the sun, isn't it? So, and that light is called twilight. So, when the sun goes below the horizon, that is in the evening, when uh, it is evening, you have dim light of the sun. It is not uh, that very bright, isn't it? Like, it is not as bright and hot and scorching as in the afternoon. So, this light is called twilight. And this twilight is faded into night. That is, the evening has almost passed and the night is approaching. Dublin lay enveloped in darkness. Yeah, Dublin, do you know? It's the, of course, I think you really know it, isn't it? Dublin is the capital of Ireland. So, why is this Dublin taken? Because we know that our writer, that is Liam of Laherty, is a person from Dublin. Or is a person from Ireland. So he is relating or writing something that is relating to Ireland. Yeah, we have already seen in the introduction that whenever he writes, he will be writing something relating to Ireland. So this is the capital of Ireland. Is it okay? Yeah. So this Dublin is the capital of Ireland. And we have the words lay enveloped in darkness. What is the meaning of the word enveloped? So we know the envelope that is a cover in which the letters are put in, isn't it? So, similarly, that is used as a noun. So, that envelope is a noun. That is, it's a name of a thing. Here, we have it as a verb. So, what is a verb? Verb is an action word that denotes something. An action, isn't it? Or it can show some possession or state of being. So, I'm not going much into grammar. I'll just explain you this. So, envelope means just simply it covers. Okay, that is, it is covered. So, Dublin lay covered in darkness. It simply means Dublin was in darkness. Why? Because night is approaching. But the, for the dim light of the moon that shone through fleecy cloud. But the dim light of the moon. That is very. That is you know the light of the moon is not that very bright as the sun. Isn't it? So that is very dim. And that is shown through the fleecy clouds. The pronunciation is fleecy. What is fleecy? Again I am going to show you a picture. Okay. Fleecy. What is the meaning of it? It is white and fluffy looking clouds. Or you can just simply say at white and cotton like clouds isn't it so just see the picture so this is white and fluffy looking clouds so uh, this light of the moon is when passing through this fle fleecy clouds it ca casting a pale light as of approaching dawn over the streets and the dark waters of leafy so casting a pale light it is not very bright isn't it so you know it's dull what's the meaning of the word pale it is dull okay it is casting a pale light as of approaching dawn so, what is the meaning of dawn? Yeah, I think you're, most of you know it, isn't it? So, dawn, yeah, I'll just give you, I'll just try to relate it. Dawn, dusk. Now, did you get it? Yes. It is morning and evening. So, dawn is for morning and dusk is for evening. So, you can just use the word, it's a synonym. So, instead of using the word morning and evening, you can use these words like dawn, dusk. So, the approaching dawn. So, you know, after the day, you have the night. Similarly, what is the situation here? It's night here, isn't it? So, after this night, you will have the day. So, it is casting a pale light as of the approaching dawn. That means it is already completely dark. That is, it is night. And now it is arriving. That is the arrival of the next new bright days denoted here. Okay. And the dark waters of the Liffey. Liffey is the name of a river that flows through Ireland. And it flows through the center of Dublin. Okay. So, Dublin is the capital city of Ireland, we know. And this Liffey, that is the name of the river. It flows through the middle of Ireland. Okay. That is, sorry, middle of Dublin. Okay. Around the beleaguered four codes, the heavy guns rode. What a sentence is it? Okay. So, it's a really meaningful sentence. Around the beleaguered four codes. So, you are not familiar with that word, be ligured, isn't it? So, I'll just show you the meaning. Lay seized to. Means, still not similar, not, still not familiar, isn't it? So, I have taken some similar words that you can just see. Besieged under, seized under. Next, surrounded, encircled. I think you can just replace the word be ligured with encircled or surrounded. Now, just have a reading of the first one. He led a relief force to aid of the 
beleaguered city so read this that is replace the word beleaguered with surrounded or encircled so shall we have a reading about it so this is around the beleaguered instead of that we are going to replace it with encircled or surrounded around the surrounded four courts the heavy guns rode okay so now did you get the meaning so around those four courts what is a court a, a building in which legal proceedings happen isn't it so you know about the high court supreme court and so on so i'm not going to explain you all those because you know all those isn't it so around the beleaguered court the heavy guns rode what is a gun you know of course you know isn't it road can a gun roar just think can a gun roar no isn't it you we usually learn this word roar with lion isn't it so when you hear the roaring of a lion will you sit comfortable like this no isn't it so you'll be afraid even if the lion is in a cage or if it's behind the bars also you will be still afraid when you hear the roars now it is the comparison is the guns roar it means that the loud sound of the guns that is the sound of the guns are so loud so fearful so strong that it creates in us a feeling that it creates a lot of emotion in us makes us afraid okay so around this there are the sound of the guns here and there through the city machine guns and rifles so here and there in the city look in the nook and corner everywhere they are using the rifles the guns so i'll just show you a picture of rifle i think you are really familiar with rifles aren't you yes of course so this was a picture of a rifle okay so they are using machine guns and rifles so because of this machines and the rifles the silence of the night is broken you of course know the night is silent isn't it yeah why because we will all be working the entire day and then it's only at night that we can rest so we will be resting at night everybody will be resting isn't it so the night is silent and this silence of the night is broken by the si sound of the guns and the machine guns and rifles so just imagine just keep quiet for a second it's silent isn't it so all of a sudden you hear the sound of a gun how will your reaction be will you sit quiet like this no so it is like spasmodically like dogs barking on lone farms the word spasmodically you are not familiar with that isn't it i'll show another meaning spasmodic occurring or done in brief irregular burst so it is occurring in irregular burst so i think that's the word you can remember or i have taken similar words that is intermittent irregular so irregular burst i think that's more uh, conveying the meaning so irregular burst so spasmodically like dogs barking i'll give you a better explanation see imagine a farm in which nobody is there okay so of course when people are not there the animals will be the owners of the farm isn't it so just imagine a dog is there will the dog tell you that i am going to bark now no isn't it so when it feel like bark it will bark so there is no chance of telling the dog please keep quiet there is nothing of that sort isn't it so this dog is going to bark at any time irregularly that is it it be an irregular burst of sound similarly this guns are used irregularly that is they are not telling that i'll be using the gun whenever they see a, see an enemy they'll burst the that is they'll use a gun republicans and free starters were waging civil war now i think you understood what was happening there were two people that is republicans on one side the free starters on the other side they were waging civil wars what is a civil war a war that is happening in the country itself so they were waging civil wars on one side you have the republicans and the other other side you have free starters so they are waging civil wars against each other okay what is the meaning of waging that is carry on continue okay so these are the meaning carry on that is a war or a campaign next it is necessary to destroy their capacity to wage war that is to their capacity to destroy that is their capacity to carry on a war we have to destroy so that is what is sent in the sentence I'll read it once more it is necessary to destroy their capacity to wage war instead of the word wage to carry on war okay is that fine yeah okay so the next one so i hope you were able to understand those just i'll just summarize it so it was a long june day when the scenes are happening dublin was in darkness and everything was in darkness and the next day is approaching that is almost the night is over and around those four courts there was a roaring or the um, guns were using guns were being used that it is compared to the similarity like the barking of dogs on lone farms that it can be it can happen on any time at any spontaneous time 
Next, Republicans and Free Starters were waging civil war. So, the two people who were waging war are Republicans and Free Starters. Okay. So, the next one. On a rooftop near O'Connell Bridge, a Republican sniper lay watching. Beside him lay his rifle and over his shoulder was slung a pair of field glasses. His face was the face of a student, thin and ascetic, but his eyes had the cold gleam of a fanatic. They were deep and thoughtful, the eyes of a man who is used to looking at death. So, this is an explanation about, about whom is it? Yes, it's, it's about the Republican sniper. So, we had seen in the earlier paragraph, there were two people who were waging civil war, that is the Republicans and the free starters. So, this is a paragraph about a Republican sniper. That is, he was lying on the top of a roof that is near O'Connell Bridge. There was a bridge called O'Connell and beside that, this Republican sniper was lying there. Okay, so beside him, there was a rifle. So, I have already shown you the picture of a rifle, isn't it? So, I have sh uh, shown you and you are really familiar with it. So, I am not going to show you again. Do I need to show you again? No, isn't it? Yeah. So, over his shoulders was slung a pair of field glasses. So, he might have been using glasses and over his shoulders was a pair of glass. Okay. His face was the face of a student, thin and ascetic. So, his face was like the face of a student. What is the why is it compared to the face of a student? Because we students have the face of, like we students have an innocent face, isn't it? Yeah. Thin and ascetic. He was thin and ascetic. What is an ascetic or who is an ascetic? Ascetic is a person who devotes his entire life for religion or for political purpose. So I think when you saw this picture, Gautama Buddha came to your mind or Sri Buddha came to your mind. Isn't it? Sorry, Gautama Buddha or uh, Mahavira or even Sri Narayana Guru might have come to your mind, isn't it? And maybe many others might have also come, which I don't know. Yeah. So, ascetic means characterized by severe self-discipline and abstention from all forms of indulgence, typically for religious reason. So, a person who keeps aside all his abstinence, that is, he keeps aside from all sorts of uh, luxurious life just for political purpose sorry just for religious purpose it can also be for religious and political purpose also there are people who keep aside all those for political also so this is about religious purpose and now we have the sniper who is keeping aside all his uh, all his type of uh, leisures or pleasures just for the sake of his own country or just for winning his war okay so he is having the face of an ascetic student thin who is thin but his eyes had the cold gleam of a fanatic but his eyes had the cold gleam what is gleam gleam the other word that you can replace is shine that is shine brightly shine all those other words so but his eyes were so gleaming that is it was so shining it was gleaming like that of a fanatic who is a so gleam shine brightly especially with reflected light light gleamed on china cat similar words shine and glimmer i think you can I have already told you the example or I have given you the uh, explanation. I think it was enough. So, gleam means shine. So, it was having the shine of a fanatic. Now, this is another new word for us, isn't it? Who is a fanatic? Yeah, a person filled with excessive and single-minded zeal, especially for an extreme religious or political cause. So, this is called a person, a person who is having extreme or excessive Single-minded zeal. Zeal means uh, determination, an aim to achieve something religious or political cause. For some religious or political cause, if he is having so much of desire, we, we call that fanatic. So, he was a person with so much of zeal and enthusiasm to achieve what he wants. What would he want? His success in the war, isn't it? Yeah. They were deep and thoughtful. The eyes of a man who is used to looking at death. So, his eyes were... were his eyes were very deep and thoughtful, isn't it? So the eyes were deep and thoughtful, and the eyes who is the eyes of a man who is used to looking at death. So he is a sniper, isn't it? Sniper is a person who uses a gun or the rifle very. Uh, he is uh, adept in using it. That is, he is very expert in using that. So a sniper is already is every time used to facing death. Why? Because the not only he is expert, but the other who is. An enemy of him is also an expert person in shooting, isn't it? So, whenever there is an enemy on his opposite side, there are chances for him to be hurt with the bullets. So, he might have faced situations when he might have almost faced death and then might have returned back to life. 
That's why it just said, they were deep and thoughtful, the eyes of a man who is used to looking at death. So his eyes are deep and thoughtful, yet he, he is ascetic and leads a life of a student, simple and having the gleam of a fanatic. Okay, so I hope you have understood till this much.